Hello and welcome back to The Wisdom of Odin. So for the last few weeks, I've been making Norse mythology related videos. This is something I've wanted to explore, but I wanted to, of course, do it in my own unique way. So the first video we did was on the wild hunt and then most recently on the creation myth. Today, I want to talk about the nine realms of Norse mythology and, of course, relate that back to the modern practice of following the old ways today. And so the setup of this has kind of changed and morphed. At first, I was just doing the kind of dramatic reading of the, you know, the myth, which is what I did with the Wild Hunt. And then in the most recent creation myth, I added a conversation in afterwards, basically discussing what this means for us today. And I think that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. Uh, but I kind of wanted to formalize this here. This is a series I'm trying to do. So please let me know down below if there's other myths you want me to cover in this kind of format where I do a dramatic reading, which is what I believe we should be doing because that's really how this information was transmitted in the past before it was written down. And so I think that's how I should share it with you now and then the discussion afterwards. So let me know down below what myths you would like me to cover next. Now, I do want to say before I get started here, the way I actually compile these stories is I go through the source material of these myths and I kind of boil it down into how I would tell the story. I try not to change any of the facts or the information, uh, but just kind of add my own twist to it. And so all of this information for the most part comes from the prose and poetic edda. And then I kind of boil down what we know about the nine realms into this video you're about to watch. So I hope you enjoy the voiceover and the story and the, all that stuff and then the conversation afterwards. All right, enjoy. Come around my fire. For I have another story to tell. Let us speak of the cosmos and the layout of our universe. In the center is the great tree Yggdrasil. High does her branches stretch and deep do her roots grow. On this great tree sits the nine realms. Midgard was created by Grimnir and his brothers out of the flesh of Ymir. To the east lies the land of that giant's offspring, Jotunheim. And below the realm of men rests the land of the dead known as Helheim, where one of the roots of the world tree grows and ends. Above the realm of man lies the realm of the Aesir and their golden halls. And somewhere out there is Vanaheim. Probably. It's probably out there. And then there is the realm of the light elves known as Alfheim, but honestly, we, we really don't know if it's out there. We, yeah. And supposedly, there is a place called Spot Alfheim, the realm of the dark elves, but we, but we kind of lost track of it and we don't know where it went. But then there is Muspelheim, the realm of fire. The opposite of Muspelheim is Niflheim, the land of something that's cold and makes rhyme, whatever rhyme is, but it, it's out there and Snorri talked about it, so uh, you know we have to talk about it too. The world tree is made of many interesting creatures that walk among its bark and branches. Like there's this squirrel that kind of climbs up and down and goes and tells an eagle to fuck off and then goes down and talks to some worms or, or something like that. And that's basically it. So thus ends the story of the Nine Realms from our histories from the Old North. Okay, so I had to write this one like this because this research made me go absolutely insane. Uh, this is one of the things that's actually a little infuriating about Norse mythology is what's kind of happened in the last 200 years of scholars researching into this is there's some information that we actually don't know is correct. I mean, you go to any Norse pagan out there, any Norse mythology enthusiast, and you ask them, what are the nine realms? They're going to give you the same nine realms for the most part. But honestly, according to the source material, we only know... A little maybe you know Jotunheim, Midgard, Asgard, and Helheim are kind of the only ones that we can say for certain so this research can be very hard to look into and honestly a lot of the other realms have been just kind of thrown in there they're like oh well you know the r land of the Jotuns so obviously the land of the elves needs to be in there but we barely know literally anything about Alfheim you know we know as much about Alfheim as we do as the land of Thor, where he supposedly inhabits separate from the Asgard tribe, you know, and then there's Vanaheim, which again is mentioned one time in the Poetic Edda, but yet it is listed as one of the nine realms. 
And at some point, a scholar just decided to make an educated guess and say, you know what, it's probably one of the nine realms. Um, so I do want to continue this conversation, but I don't want to do it in here. It is a beautiful world out there, and it's actually, we're getting that false spring right now here in Kentucky where it's a little warm. Uh, so I do want to take us outside into a beautiful view as I normally do uh, and continue this conversation in a little bit more rational way, maybe, probably. That is much better scenery for this video. So the, as far as like that intro, like to explain it a little bit, um, if you actually go into the source material of what we know about the nine realms, it's pretty vague because you have two things, right? You have a line basically saying that there are nine worlds. It doesn't list the nine worlds afterwards, and that's in the Volispa. And then pretty soon after you start hearing about Midgard, Asgard, Jotunheim, and then it kind of starts petering off after that and you hear a little bit more about Helheim. And that's where the line kind of stops. And then you have to, basically what scholars have done is guessed and figured out what may have fit into these categories. And so right away, Midgard is mentioned like two stanzas afterwards. So we can infer that yes, Midgard most likely is one of the nine realms. And then the realm of the gods, the Aesir, Asgard makes sense. And then Jotunheim is mentioned all the time. So most likely Jotunheim is an actual realm of the nine realms as well. And one thing I will say for Jotunheim is it's given like a cardinal direction a lot. There's a lot of mentioning of Jotunheim being east of Midgard. And so I think this definitely infers that it was most likely a realm according to the ancestors, according to the Scandinavians. Now Helheim is a little bit unique because it's not mentioned a lot, but we do actually have a section within Grimnismal that mentions three roots grow from the world tree. And one goes to Midgard, one goes to Jotunheim, and then the other one goes to Helheim. Jotunheim, Helheim. I'm gonna get that confused the rest of the video. So without that, it would be kind of hard to say that Helheim was an actual location. Now it is an important one because that's where the dead go. Um, that's where hell presides over. But ultimately it's not mentioned a lot. And that's kind of where we end up with the other realms that are most commonly known, such as Vanaheim, Alfheim, Svartalfheim, Muspelheim, and Niflheim. Now, what about these other realms? Why are they often considered part of the nine realms and often really not refuted by any means? Now, what I could find in my research, and I could be wrong on this, but it seems like scholars saw that nine realms part of Volispa, and they're like, well, what are the nine realms? The first four, pretty easy to determine, the ones I've already listed. And then they just started guessing with the other ones. Now, with that, you know, you have Vanaheim. Well, of course, the land of the Vanir most likely needs to be one of the nine realms, even though Vanaheim is mentioned once, kind of, mostly. And so it's kind of odd, you know, I wish there was more. Now it just makes sense. Like, of course, the Vanir realm, hard to say. And then that kind of goes with the other realms as well. As far as Alfheim and Svartalfheim, the realm of the elves and the, re the realm of the dark elves or the dwarves. And so it's like, well, if those are realms are real, then they're most likely one of the nine realms it fits. Now, where I'm going to start arguing this is there's a lot of other realms that are mentioned, but not given the same validity. Now, here in Grimdismal, stanza four, I see a holy land which lies near those of the gods and the elves. And that place, Thruthheim, Thor will live till Ragnarok. So actually right there, I forgot to mention that the land of the elves is mentioned here. So maybe we can add a little bit more validity there. But again, we don't know that much about the elves. Um, but so why is Thruthheim, the land of Thor, mentioned between the land of elves and the gods? Why is this not considered one of the nine realms? Why do we cast that one aside? And then in stanza eight, you have a fifth land is Gladsheim, where gold bright wide Valhalla stands. Why is Gladsheim not considered one of the nine realms? And then in stanza 11, Thiazi, the mighty giant, once lived in the sixth hall, now known as Thierm Thrymheim. And then Freya rules the ninth land, known as Folkwagner. And then in stanza 17, the wide land of Vithar is overgrown with high grass and weeds. Why is that not considered one of the nine realms? So it definitely seems like a lot of stuff was not considered. And they were like, well, we we're pretty sure the elves had their realm, the dark elves had their realm, and that just makes sense. Well, and then, you, and then there's Muspelheim and Niflheim. Why are those considered actual part of the Nine Realms when really they're only mentioned by Snorri in the Prose Edda? Uh, and the Svart Elf land is basically only mentioned in the Prose Edda as well. The, the Dark Elves in general being different than the Dwarves is really only specified by Snorri um, and their realm existing. But even then, their realm seems to be only within the Earth of Midgard. So why is that considered a realm? My point here being that it seems like those four mains, Jotunheim, Asgard, Midgard, and Helheim, 
are the only ones that we know without real question are part of the nine realms. The other five, I'm not so sure of personally, and I'm sure I'm never gonna be able to convince uh, the Norse pagan, the Norse mythology world of my, you know, my art degree background saying that, that the other five might not actually be part of the nine realms. But from my research, it really seems like there's been a lot of educative guessing when it comes to placing the other five. I'm not 100% sure what the nine realms are, what specifically they would be, and I don't know if I would have replacements for them. But if you have an idea, let me know down below, or let me know down below if you agree with me or not, or if you think 100% the nine realms are what have been given to us commonly. Um, I really wanna know what you guys think. I don't know 100% the answer. But on our way to our next destination here to continue this conversation, if you like the content here at The Wisdom of Odin, please think about supporting it on Patreon. It's really the only way I'm able to continue to do this um, at the rate that I'm doing it. Uh, I love the work here, but it is a lot of work. Uh, so please think about going there. And I do have a lot of really great benefits as well, including our community Discord, um, live streams, early access videos, um, sneak peeks at books I'm working on currently. Uh, so please think about going there. And I also want to say that we do have our community website up now, uh, northerntraditions.org. There's a link down below if you want to learn more about our community and the gatherings we put on. Um, we also have the newsletter. You can sign up and get all the updates, all that good stuff. But otherwise, back down the trail and to the rest of this video. So I actually did do a poll here about how people view the Nine Realms, and I don't think I was actually specific enough with the different ways. Um, I did put metaphysical realms, primal forces, different planes of reality, and spiritual realms we can visit. Um, and I, I think that was too condensing, um, and honestly, even trying to describe it, I'm like, I don't even know if I actually made that made sense. Uh, but I will say 43% of people did vote um, saying there were spiritual realms we can visit. And so that's really the one I want to focus on here, uh, because it's the one I understand the most as far as the Nine Realms. Uh, but let me know once again down below what you view the nine realms as you know are they different planes of reality are they the primal forces of our earth are they just metaphysical ideas uh, let me know down below what you think uh, but the way I've interpreted them and the way I view them is as these spiritual realms and maybe it's because of my dive into shamanic practice uh, but if you look at global shamanism I mean shamanism from South America uh, from Africa from North America from Siberia even into Norway and the Germanic tribes and, and basically global Mongolian global shamanic understanding Aboriginal Australian they all kind of view the spiritual world in a very similar way they see there are higher realms lower realms and our realm and so they see the realm of the gods above us the sky beings what exists here with us and then what is below and typically they see the ancestors as below the gods above and spirits with us and then the nine different worlds fit within that upper and lower realm. And I actually did draw a little bit of a chart based on, I was really following the breadcrumb trails writings as far as like where things are, such as Jotunheim being east of Midgard. So put Midgard in the middle, Jotunheim east of that, Asgard below us, Helheim below us. And then the others, of course, I had trouble placing, which is because we just don't have that much information. Um, I did see an interesting thing from H.R. Ellis Davidson uh, talking about how Vanaheim and Svartalfheim are kind of mentioned as in the earth. And so as part of earth, and so I kind of placed them there as well. And then Alfheim, it's like, I guess, light elves, sky beings up above, maybe. And then again, this map, it just doesn't make sense with Niflheim and Muspelheim. But again, that's a different debate. And again, I don't think there's one, one true right answer. Uh, so, but this is the map I kind of came up with based on the, the information I had from the pros and poetic edit. And again, my personal experiences, sharing my personal experiences here, um, as far as my own explorations into the spirit world, you know, into like drum trances and things like that. When I encounter ancestral spirits, I encounter them in the earth. When I encounter gods, I encounter them up above. Spirits exist here with me. So again, that just kind of makes sense. So, you know, the nine realms, at least from my interpretation, are the ancestors' way of understanding the spiritual realms. Where are the gods? Where do they exist? Where do the ancestors go when we die? You know, where are the spirits of the realm? And I think it just makes sense globally that this is where they get placed. And so the nine realms would exist somewhere within this upper and lower realm understanding of the spiritual world. All right, now I do wanna have a really fun theory here. This is something that I was thinking a long time ago and then someone actually messaged me on Instagram asking if this is something that, you know, makes sense. So I do wanna share it. I'm gonna move further down the trail and closer uh, to the end of our video here and share with you kind of this just fun, crazy idea. Man. 
now this kind of fun and crazy idea. <laughs> this is something I thought of a long, to a long time ago, is that the nine realms were the nine celestial bodies in our solar system. And obviously this is me accepting uh, what we know as the nine realms. Uh, you know, obviously Midgard, Earth, Asgard could be Jupiter, uh, Vanaheim could be, you know, uh, Saturn, uh, Mars could be Jotunheim, <laughs> I mean, Niflheim is uh, Uranus, and then, uh, you know, what, what else did I say? Svartalfheim could be Mercury, uh, Alfheim could be, I think Alfheim was Saturn, Vanaheim was uh, Venus, and so they actually kind of all fit, and then obviously Muspelheim as the sun, uh, you know, we're not counting Pluto here. Sorry, Pluto. Uh, but again, it's a fun theory. Now, uh, did the ancestors understand that? I mean, they, they could have known about some of the planets, uh, but they definitely wouldn't have known about the further away ones. Uh, so, you know, it's less likely, but again, it's, it's a fun idea and fun theory. And I like fun ideas and fun theories. And if you're like a science fiction writer, I mean, shoot, maybe if I get good enough at writing, I could write a sci-fi series about how the nine realms are the nine celestial bodies in our solar system. I think it makes an interesting sci-fi story but definitely doesn't necessarily make sense for a religious practice or necessarily for the mythology. But again, just a fun, entertaining conversation uh, that I like to have with people from time to time, so I'm sharing it here with you. But ultimately, here at the very end, I don't think any theory is truly unvalidated. I think if you can make a good argument, it makes sense because we don't know 100% the right answer. I mean, shit, we, we, really, we don't even know 100% what all the nine realms are. I mean, if I've made any argument, I, and maybe you know, convince you of anything, I hope you understand that I really don't think we know what the nine realms really are. We, we know four of them um, and maybe a couple of others, but I think uh, the, the last five are a little, a little sketchy at best and definitely have been made with some educated guessing. Uh, but that's kind of this faith in general is we don't know everything. We don't know 100% the answer. Um, and I think that's why personal experiences are so important. And so that's why I, I really do believe the nine realms are spiritual planes of existence that we can visit because I've simply visited them myself. I mean, in all honesty, in my shamanic trance work, I have seen the realm of the dead. You know, did I see a sign that said Helheim? No, but I experienced, I saw a swampy kind of place. I experienced, you know, an ancestral thing there. Um, you know, I've had led rituals climbing the world tree to the Asgard to speak to the gods and give them offerings, and it's been a powerful experience. And so that's how I experienced the nine realms. Once again, put down below how you experience them, your theories, how to have conversations about it. Um, let's get around a fire after that, uh, drink some good mead and talk some more because that's what we should be doing. We should be having these conversations across the fire, being respectful about it and having a great time because that's one of the most beautiful parts about this faith. Thank you so very much for joining me for the hijinks, the journey, the beauty, and the conversation of this video. Um, and again, I can't say it enough. Let me know down. Let's, let's, let's have a conversation about this. Uh, but truly, thank you. And until the hall, Scott.